I know it's very likely that we've all seen a computer before or a mobile device, but what we may not have seen or at least recognized is some of the other network devices that are commonly used in computer networks. So check this out. In this nugget, we're going to take a look at the topology diagram and pictures of things like switches and routers and firewalls. And then I'll show you side by side what some of those physical devices actually look like. So using this topology diagram once again, let's start off with a computer and let's start off with this one right here. And this is computer two that is connected with a network interface card into a switch. So let's bring in exhibit number one. So we're going to start here with a uh, computer. So here's a, a laptop computer. It's kind of an older one, keeping it around for sentimental reasons. In any event, this computer has two network interface cards. It has one for a wired connection right here using this connector. That's an RJ45 connector or an Ethernet uh, cable connector goes in there. And RJ45 is just the RJ stands for register jack and number 45. So an RJ45 is a typical type of connector we have on a network interface card. It also has built into it a wireless network interface card if we want to connect via Wi-Fi to an access point on the network. So from this computer, we would connect to a switch. So I have some cables here, and these are um, what they refer to as unshielded twisted pair. So in these cables, there's actually eight sets of contacts or groupings of wires that are all uh, terminated to each of the pins. So if we take, and these are all the same, by the way, except for the color. So if I take one of these, let's take uh, blue. So if we take blue and we connect from the network interface card on this laptop, we just click that into place. Then we take the other end of that cable and we plug it into our switch. So here's our switch right here. And we just take an unused port on the switch and plug it in. Bada bing, bada boom. We now have our first leg of connectivity from the computer via a network interface card to the physical switch. Now for clients that are not using a wired network interface card like this computer right here, they're gonna connect over radio frequency via wireless through an access point. So if we wanna use an access point, we need to make sure our access point is also connected to the network. So let's go ahead and walk through that next. So to do the access point, we need to have an access point. So I happen to Ta da I happen to have one. This is an access point from Cisco Systems. There's a lot of different flavors and models and vendors and so forth, but basically it's a, uh, a device that sends and receives radio frequencies and also connects to a switch. So if we open it up, it has a connection for a Ethernet connection to go to the switch. So we'll go ahead and take, uh, and again, the colors are just for convenience sake for these cables. So I'll take this cable and I will plug it in here. So that's our access point, or AP for short, and we'll plug the other end of this cable into the switch, just like this. And there we have it. Now an access point, because it's sending and receiving uh, wireless signals for the clients, it needs to have some source of power. And so power can be delivered a couple of ways to this device. We can have a transformer and plug it in with an adapter right here. Uh, that's one way of giving it power. Or if our switch supports it, we can also deliver power to this access point over the existing ethernet cable that it's currently using to connect. So this would close it up. I'm going to do this right. So I would want to put this connection down here, go to the bottom so I can actually close this. And then this can be mounted in the ceiling. As far as the cable lengths, we'd have uh, cables that are run along the ceiling or in the floor somewhere between usually some kind of a wiring closet on that floor of the building and the location, whether it's an outlet in the office for a computer or going to an access point that's mounted off of the ceiling, if that's where we're gonna place it. So we're two down. We have our computer connected and our access point connected, both connected to a switch. Next, if we had a need for more switch ports that were on one physical switch, we could connect switches together by running a cable between the two switches. So let's take a look at that next. So to put the two switches together, we'd use the appropriate cable. Here's a, a little cable that goes between two switches and I'd plug it into one switch and then the other switch. And now we have them logically connected together. Now there, there'd be some configuration to do on each of those respective ports to make that all work correctly, but that's the basis of connecting it. We also have the option, depending on the switch, to connect via something other than copper cabling. We could also use fiber. So depending on your switch and what modules it has, we could also connect them together using fiber. And that's often done if we have long, long distances to go and extremely tall buildings, for example, we can use fiber to interconnect our switches together from floor 
all the way down to the data center, which may be in the lower floors or in the basement of that building. Next, let's take a look at connecting a switch over to a router and what the connection there and the router looks like. So this bottom device here is a router. Now, physically, it's a rectangular box. Physically, it kind of looks like it might, it could be a switch. So we'll take a closer look at the functionality, which is the important part between a switch and a router. We'll save that for a couple separate nuggets. But for the connectivity between a switch and the router, we get yet again a cable and we plug into one of the ports on the switch and we plug into one of the ports on the router and that's where we get our physical connectivity between the switch and the router. And once again, the router would need a little bit of configuration based on the specific vendor that we're working with to get it operating and correctly working in our network. Next, let's take a look at getting connectivity between our router and a firewall to see what that physical device could look like. And what we do to connect from the router, we connect, use one of the ports on the router, and we go ahead and connect to a firewall. Now this is an example of a Palo Alto firewall. This is like their baby bear version. And all these devices, the routers and firewalls, they have various sizes based on the vendors and what's needed. So this is a, a little entry level firewall from Palo Alto Networks, which by the way, Palo Alto makes a fantastic firewall. So what we do is connect from the router to the firewall, and that's where we get our connectivity there. So the play-by-play -play is the PC is physically connected to the switch, the switch is physically connected to the router, the router is physically connected to the firewall, and the firewall can then connect out to the next router or next device on the path to the other networks that we need to go ahead and reach. Now, one other thing before we go here is that sometimes in a small office home office, and there's an acronym for that, like SOHO, small office home office, we have devices that have integrated everything. So we could have, for example, switch ports, a, layer, a switch built in to this device. We could have the routing function built into this device. We could have the access point built in to this device. And that's why uh, most home routers have those three components built in. Switching ports, routing capability, and wireless access point capability all built in to one easy to configure device that's affordable for most homeowners. So we'll take a closer look at that one as well too as we proceed through this course together. So thanks for joining me in this tour of the physical devices and how they map to the devices in our topology. And I'll see you my friend in the very next nugget as we take a look at more details on networks. Meanwhile, I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.